Hello everyone, welcome back. So in the previous videos, we have created the app called Demo App, and we were also talked about authentication and uh, different types of platforms that we can add. And apart from this, we also talked about uh, certificates and secrets, and which is more secure uh, from these two. And we also added a value here, so we have to make sure that we copy this value. So however, coming to this uh, task, we'll be adding a scope. So let me read the description according to the docs. So basically the code in the client application request uh, permissions to perform operations defined uh, by your web API by passing an access token along with request uh, to the protected resources, that is the web API. So the web API then uh, performs the requested operation only if the access token it receives contains the scope. So also known as application permissions, so requ uh, required for this operation. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, uh, let's go to the expose and A. So if you are uh, using multi-tenant, so make sure that uh, you are in uh, correct uh, directory. So you have to just uh, go here and uh, change the directory accordingly. So if you have multi uh, multi-tenant, so right now since I'm only working on this single tenant, so I don't require this. Oh shit! So let me go back. Yeah, expose uh, an API and in this case you have to add uh, a scope so you can uh, edit this as well so define a custom scope to restrict access to data and functionality protected by api an application that uh, requires access to the parts of this api can request that a user or the admin consent to one of the followings okay adding a scope here creates only a delicated permission if you are looking to create application only scope use app rules, define app rules, assigned uh, to the application, so okay. So let's go ahead and uh, click this uh, add to the scope. And uh, here we, ha uh, we have prompted to uh, application ID URI. So let's save and continue. So right now you can see we have a scope name, who can consent it, and the admin consent displays name and so on. We have different sections here, we'll be talking about it. So coming to the first name, the scope name, examples, file read and so on. So here you can read it. This uh, this is how the scope will appear when accessing to an API is being requested. Uh, and in access tokens, which, uh, sorry, when the scope has been uh, granted to the client application, this must be unique across the application. So the best practice is to use resource operation constraint uh, as a pattern to generate the name. So we'll be adding this. So I'm just using uh, the examples uh, which I, uh, I got from the docs. So I'll just add those uh, names like uh, employees read only stuff. So this is the name of uh, the scope. So this is the convention that uh, we have used according to as they mentioned, the resource, the operation and constraint. So we have done with that and who can consent it. So let's read about what it is. So oh, this determines whether user can consent to this scope in a directory where user consent is enabled. Select admin only for higher privilege uh, permissions. So here we can use uh, accordingly based on our needs. We can use admin only or uh, where admins and users can also uh, perform the consent. So for higher, we can use admins only as mentioned and uh, coming to admin consent display name so let's read that what it is this is uh, what the scope will be called in a consent screen when admins concerned to this uh, scope so let's uh, add that according to the docs so here in this case i'll just add admins and user and coming to admin concerned so let me add that since we added read only access to employee uh, records and uh, coming to ad admin consent uh, description. So let's read what it is. So this is a detailed description of the scope that is displayed when uh, tenant admin expand a scope on a consent screen. So let's add the description as well. So allow the application to have read only access to all the employment's data, employee data. So we have done with that and user consent display name. So let's read that. This is what the scope will be called in a consent screen when users consent to this scope. 
So let's add read only access uh, to your employees data. Let me add that one. Done. And coming to user consent uh, description. So let's see. This is the detailed description of uh, scope that is displayed when uh, user expands the scope on his consent screen. So let's add the user concern allow application. Let me add that one. Done. So allow the application to have read only access to the employee data. So this is done and coming to the state, you can see here it's enabled. So you can disable based on that. So let's go ahead and enable this. And you have to just add scope here. So let's add that. So you can see we have uh, added the scope and it has been created for us who can concern and uh, the one that we have added before and coming to the scopes. So we also have, uh, so here you can see we also have uh, authorized client applications. So authorizing a client uh, application indicates that this API trusts the application and uh, users who uh, not be asked to consent when uh, the client calls this particular API. So if they are accessing this, so they, they need to have that concern. Whereas if we add any uh, client application. So here you can add the client ID. So once you add, like you just need to add the application here. So if you follow this optional step, the client app is now pre-authorized uh, and the users won't be prompted uh, for this uh, concern before signing into it. So that is all about uh, exposing an API. So in the next video, we'll be adding a scope requiring admin consent. So I hope you guys understood the concept of today's video. If you've liked the video, please click the like button below. And if you've not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel and please share the video. Thanks everyone.